in this, it's going to ask you to complete this table. So the chemical formula, these are the elements. This is the name. Those are going to be words. In order to do this, you need to have a copy of your periodic table. The periodic table on the exam is the one in the exam module. It will have all the element names on it. But you will need to have learned, hopefully memorized, all of your common ions. So in order to do this, for the top four, we're going to take them apart. So you want to identify each of these. So Au is gold. And this is hydroxide. So it's going to be gold hydroxide. But the thing is, gold is a transition metal. So it's going to be gold. And the charge on the gold is 2 plus. And we know that because the hydroxide, which is O, oops, H minus, we have two of those. Two negatives means you have to have two positives. And so from here, you're going to have gold 2 hydroxide. So what is this next one? So V is vanadium. O is oxygen, but it's in a compound, so it's going to be oxide. So O2 is means there are two oxygens. So the charge on this is going to be negative 2 times 2, which is negative 4. So we know it's going to be vanadium. Whoops, that's not a whole word. Hold on, let me erase that. I kind of forgot. Vanadium IV, which is for, in the Roman numerals, oxide. So the next one is magnesium, is Mg, and SO3 is a polyatomic ion, which is sulfate, sulfite. And so with magnesium, the trick is to remember the magnesium is not a transition metal, so it does not need the charge in brackets or in parentheses. So it's magnesium sulfite, which is different than sulfate. Spelling is not important. I mean, it is important, but I will not mark off for spelling, but you can't say that sulfite and sulfate are a spelling mistake. If you were, I don't know how you would spell it a different way, but that's what you're looking for. So for this next one, we have silicon and fluorine. So when you have two nonmetals together, you need to use the different prefixes. So this is silicon, silicon, and then there are four fluorines, tetra, fluoride. And so these are the mono, di, tri, tetra, penta, et cetera, words. So for the, the next four, instead of giving the formula to the name, we want to go from the formula, from the name back to the formula. So it's important to note phosphite is PO3, 3 minus, and cobalt 3 plus means that it's CO3 plus. These two charges cancel out, so you'll end up with COPO3. You don't need to use any parentheses. So next, we have cadmium, which is CD, plus one, and we got that from this charge here. And then we have arsenate, which is ASO43 minus. If your cadmium only has a plus one and your arsenate has a minus three, you need multiple cadmiums in order to get to the arsenate. So it turns out that you need three cadmiums. So cadmium three, arsenate, ASO4. These parentheses here are optional. I will accept it with or without. So next, strontium bromide. Strontium is a regular metal in one of the first two columns. And so it is SR2 plus. And we know that bromide is Br minus. So you need two bromines to balance out the strontium. So you have SRBr2. And then the last one, dihydrogen monoxide. This means you have one O and two hydrogen. 
And so you would write that H2O. We tend to call this water. So naming is challenging if you don't know your polyatomics. You can look at either the common ion table or the polyatomics table. Those have the same things. You are just required to know all of the polyatomics. 